So this is E3720 week 8 uh, lecture 2. So today we're going to continue with our lag lead compensator this lag and lead sorry not lag lead compensator design from chapter 9. Last lecture we actually talked about the ideal PI controller and I mentioned to you for the lag compensator in general uh, you'll have this pole zero plot like this where the zero is to the left of the pole and for the lead compensator the zero will be to the right of the pole. Uh, let's start, however, by noticing, uh, excuse me, noticing the differences between these two pole zero plots of the compensator. It is notice for this plot how I have drawn the poles and zeros of the compensator very close to the origin because recall what do we want with the lag compensator? We want to minimize steady state error, uh, number one. Number two, we also want to make sure that our uh, gain for the simple for the system feedback system with simply the peak controller is not is almost or is very close to this gain k here so in other words if you look at the steady state error let's say response due to a step input steady state error so if you look at the static error constant if you want to minimize the steady state error we, are, we want Z, the ratio of the compensator zero to the compensator pole to be large uh, for minimizing the appropriate steady state error. Here I gave you the example of visualizing the step response. But if you want that to be true and you want obviously the transient response to be largely unaffected with when compared to the simple P controller, in that case, the only way that can happen is if these two uh, compensator pole and zero are very close to the origin. So if it's a lag compensator, this pole zero plot of the compensator should come to your mind. Okay. Now for the lead compensator, the nice thing is since we're dealing with transient response specs for the lead compensator, recall from last lecture, I told you that the PD controller is the ideal lead compensator but for a generic read lead compensator where the zero of the compensator is to the right of the pole the good like uh, uh, good news or uh, whatever i guess is uh the since we're dealing with transient response spec we can actually find out what one of these uh, we can actually find out that given one of these uh pole or zero. The other one can be found from the angle criterion in the root locus because the angle contribution of this constant is zero. Okay? We know the sum of the angles, uh, if you visualize this uh, feedback system again, just think about this instead of the lag compensator, think about this as the lead compensator. We know that for the closed loop uh, root locus criterion given the angle criterion for the uh, for the root locus is, is such that the sum of the angle contributions so that's the those are the words i was looking for angular contributions from the compensator poles compensator zero uh, and the plant poles and zeros they all must add up to an odd multiple of 180 and we'll use that to determine the lead compensator but the best way to understand this is through examples. So we'll do two skill assessment exercises. The first one is skill assessment exercise 9.1. And you can see that this all deals with steady state error. So let's start out the solution by first drawing a picture. And since we're dealing with steady state error, we're dealing with a uh, lag compensator. But for now, oops, let me draw a picture like this. this my plant is K over s times s plus 7 but let me separate out the gain from g and get this so here is our picture for now he's saying it is operating with a closed loop response that has 15 percent overshoot now in order to evaluate the steady state error for a ramp input we, we can see that the system is type 1 there's one um, integrated in the feed forward path or one pole at the origin so the steady state error due to a step is zero so obviously you're going to quantify steady state error using a ramp input. So hopefully this thing saves. 
the windows. Okay. But for that, we need to find k, and that's easy to do in this case, actually. Uh, the closed loop transfer function is simply given by k over s squared plus 7s plus k, 15% uh, overshoot. Uh, therefore, to find k, we can simply say e to this minus zeta pi over square root of 1 minus zeta squared is 0 0.15. It wasn't 50%, it's 15%. So zeta is approximately, I think I've already done this on my calculator. No, I haven't. So I thought I did. Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, there it is. So let me get it out. So for 15% overshoot, I get zeta is approximately 0.517. Therefore, comparing this to my standard second order transfer function, you can see that 2 zeta omega n equals 7, which implies omega n is square root of k is 7 over 2 zeta, which implies k is approximately 45.84. But that's not our answer. What he's asking for part A is the steady state error due to a lamp, ramp, lamp, the limit as s goes to 0 of s r over 1 plus g and r is 1 over s squared so basically as you may recall from chapter 7 what we get is simply the s times g in this case well you're going to include uh, so let me do this since i put g separately let me do k times g so it's going to be k times s over s plus 7. This implies that the steady state error due to a ramp is 7 over k, which implies steady state error due to a ramp is approximately, and I thought I also got this. So where is my um, piece of paper? So this is, there it is. So it's point one five two seven and we can check this answer from the book that's what he has okay so this is related to the ramp now the second part of this question says i want a lag compensator to improve the steady state error by a factor of 20. again lag compensator means this picture should come to your mind up here uh, so let's see since we want to improve this by a factor of 20, therefore, so for part B, so consider now this system plus minus k s plus zc over s plus ec. So now what we have is still 1 over s times s plus 7. So here is c, here is r. Therefore, the steady state error due to a ramp now simply becomes, well, 1 over the limit as s goes to 0 of my compensator k zc. So I'll put this as k tilde uh, pc, uh, the compensator pole, times 1 over 7. Okay, and we want this. To be so you want to improve it by a factor of 20 so there's a point so it's going to be 1 over 20 times the steady state due to a ramp which is 7 over k so and then where am i writing i've already taken the limit here so this goes to zero Let me fix that so in other words this is going to be 7 over k times 1 over zc over pc but then here's the big thing because of the way we have our this is k tilde so k tilde is approximately k and then therefore zc over pc the ratio should be a factor of 20 okay therefore pick lag of s so let's see um now let's say we pick this as point one okay the pole location and the zero location is going to be two but that's not very close to the origin so let's reduce this by a factor of 10 
and then this is going to be 0.2 okay um, so but then we have to find the k now so that's the lag compensator okay what's the question we have to finish designing the lag compensator that's right now we need to check if new root locus intersects fifteen uh, percent overshoot line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly sketch the root locus, pause the lecture, sketch it, and in the meantime you also sketch it with the lag compensator in there, and then it will inter it'll intersect. Now the question is, what are the closed loop pole locations, which I'll find from MATLAB and I'll give you on corresponding to those closed loop pole locations for 15% overshoot, what is the value of K? And once we find the value of, uh, actually, again, uh, let's see. Do, do, do. So I messed this up in this one. This should be K tilde. I use tilde here. Sorry about that. This should be K tilde. So uh, once we find uh the desired close to pole locations you can find k tilde and make sure it is pretty close to the k we found here so let me pause the lecture and do all that and i'll be buck. okay continuing so what i've done what hopefully you have done is sketch the root locus so here it is now what's interesting about this root locus is first of all the theta that we want is the 58.87 degrees line corresponding to a zeta of point, uh, 0.517. Now, what's interesting about this root locus is because this compensator Z, uh, pole and the compensator is so close to each other and to the origin, you basically have this 90 degree asymptote here, okay, between to the left of the compensator zero. So, in other words, you have this small little loop, uh, the closed loop system is basically third order. Okay, so you have three branches. So you have one, the real axis segments here, two real axis segments that meet up. You're going to have a, uh, basically two breakaway points, one here, one here, and then one break-in break in point, and you can check all that. But you can quickly sketch the root locus to be this. And basically, these two desired poles for the root locus to intersect this line can be found to be very close to the desired poles for the simple P controller system. But anyway, using this, you get a K tilde of 44.64. Now we can check all this in MATLAB, and I've just set up the system. I haven't really added the pole to zero because I want to show you this really interesting root locus. So let's see, let's go here, compensator. So it's going to the compensator editor, add a real pole at, so this is at negative 0.1, no, 0.01. And then you add a real zero at negative 0.2. Then let's add the, but then let's look at the root locus. So you can see that this little segment here is really small. Okay, it's a point two and on the imaginary axis, a negative point two. But basically, if we increase the comp, increase the compensator gain to forty four point six four, see what happens. And you can see it is pretty small. So if you look at the desired closed loop poles, you get the required damping of 0.517. But not only that, you can see that the closed loop pole is negative 0.206, the third closed loop pole, but it's very, very close 
to this compensator zero okay therefore our compensator let's write this out therefore the lag compensator of s is going to be 0. I think it was 20 times so 0. 0.01 is that what we picked let's see yep 0. 0.01 times 44.64 okay so let me write this properly since traditionally therefore the lag our compensator of s is 44.64 times this okay uh, but basically it works out uh, very nicely that when you have the closed loop system the third pole, closed loop pole, is very close to the compensator zero. Again, we don't really, we should not rely on pole zero cancellation, but by design, they're very close. Therefore, only these are my dominant poles. Okay. That's point number one. Point number two is uh, Evaluate the steady state error for a unit ramp input to your compensated system. Therefore, uh, for parts let's for part C, what you get for the compensated system KV, the static velocity constant is going to be 44.64 uh, 0.2 over 0.01 times 7. But what we want is simply the steady state error. So let me just compute the steady state error. is 1 over this this is approximately uh, let's see 0 0.0078 on my calculator therefore what we actually realized in D and let me do this I'm not going to do the skill assessment exercise this is the uh, lead compensator we'll leave this for next time so let me cut this out we're running out of time and I want to push this so D therefore um, E steady state to ramp which I didn't write here so let me do this instead of just like mucking around like this C or is this C or D yeah, it's C. So it's E steady state error due to ramp is equal to 1 over 44.64 times 0.2 over 0.01 times in this case I simply get 1 over 7 okay, which is approximately 0 0.0078 and so delta is E steady state error ramp So what is it asking is that well, let's see explain how much improvement in steady state error was realized. So the E steady state error due to ramp uncompensated divide by E steady state error due to ramp compensated was I think what was this where point one five two seven divided by point zero zero seven eight, which is approximately nineteen point five eight, and it's very close to our design of twenty. Okay, so this is working out perfectly. That is, let's check the book answer. I have the book in front of me, and yeah, so that's what they have. Okay. And interestingly, in your book, he has given the lag compensator. Let me cancel this. So hopefully, no, cancel, cancel. I don't want you to restart. Okay. So let's see how much data I lost. No, oh, I lost a lot. 
Okay, so I'll fix this. But interestingly, your book does not have it's a solution, this gain, and it should. Okay. So anyway, that's about it for this lecture. So next time, I'll write it here. So next time, we'll do the lead compensator. And I'm not going to rush through the material in this sense. For those of you watching this lecture video, uh, next week, in week nine, we will start the lag lead. Okay? See you next time.